Hi, my name is Dr. Mark Sherrod. I'm professor of medicine at the NYU Medical School and director of the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Program at NYU Langone Medical Center in New York. Uh, I've been asked to talk about the pharmacologic therapy of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy symptoms. What are typical symptoms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? The symptoms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are exercise intolerance, most often manifest as shortness of breath, chest discomfort, blackouts, and fatigue. And they're caused in patients who have no obstructive HCM or non-obstructive HCM. It's caused by an inability or difficulty of the heart to fill with blood um, because of stiffness of the myocardial chamber and an inability to increase cardiac output or the amount of blood that the heart is pumped um, in response to exercise. In patients with obstruction, the situation is a bit more complex. The mitral valve gets pushed into the septal wall of the heart and blocks the blood from getting out. So because of that, the heart has to work a lot harder to get the blood out, and the pressures rise in the left ventricle. That, in turn, causes even more stiffening of the left ventricular chamber and also causes an increase in the heart's need for oxygen. In addition, in the very middle of systole during ejection, the ejection velocities and flow out of the heart are actually impeded and drop uh, because of that obstruction. Because the mitral valve is pushed into the septum, there's also a leakage of blood back into the left atrial chamber, which is transmitted directly back into the lungs, uh, causing uh, shortness of breath. Will all patients with HCM develop symptoms? No. Um, not all patients with uh, HCM will develop symptoms. Uh, there are patients who have no symptoms at all and are, are not impeded in the activities of their daily life uh, from their hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What factors predict if a patient will have symptoms or that symptoms may worsen? Well, certainly the thickening um, and the extent of thickening of the left ventricular chamber uh, is a factor. The size of that chamber, I think the smaller the heart is, the more the smaller the heart chamber is, the more likely the patients are to have symptoms. And I think most importantly is whether they're obstructed or not, because obstruction is a, uh, an important precipitant of, uh, of symptoms. Does obstructive HCM cause different symptoms than HCM without obstruction? I think patients with obstruction uh, have more, uh, more symptoms uh, overall. However, patients without obstruction can have symptoms as well um, and can have severe symptoms. So I just think that the probability of severe symptoms is worsened by uh, or exacerbated by uh, the presence of obstruction. What medicines can help improve symptoms in HCM? So the medications that um, are available for symptom relief in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy depends on whether they're obstructed or not. Um, the medications for obstruction are first-line therapies with beta blockade. Um, and then the second treatment that um, we use at our center is a medicine called disapyramide, which is a strong negative inotrope, which helps to improve the obstruction in the heart. For non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, again, uh, beta blockers are the first-line therapy. But the situation becomes complex in patients who have non-obstructive HCM because it's really not clear that anything helps a whole lot for severe symptoms in non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Another pharmacologic agent that's available is verapamil. And verapamil is often tried in both obs obstructive and non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but its uh, efficacy is uh, also quite limited uh, in that situation. 
Patients with non-obstructive HCM who have fluid in their lungs can be um, improved with uh, diuretic therapy, uh, which can um, clear some of the fluid from the lungs and improve uh, uh, the ability to uh, breathe normally. And that's about it. We don't have enough medications for HCM at this time. What medications reduce the risk for sudden death? And unfortunately, we don't have a clinical trial in that regard. So because we don't have a clinical trial in that regard, uh, we can't say with certainty. So the way that a clinical trial like that would be done would be half the patients would get that medication, the other half would not get the medication, and then we would follow them longitudinally over a period of, say, four or five years, and we would observe whether there was a difference in the chance of dying suddenly. The problem with doing such a trial is that, first of all, the risk of dying suddenly in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is thankfully relatively low on the order of a half to 1% per year. So one would have to enroll very, very many patients to detect a difference. That being said, with the combination of oral disapyramide and beta blocker, we have seen relatively few sudden cardiac deaths. We believe because it decreases gradients uh, to a moderate extent, and we believe that helps decrease the risk. However, I would never say that that combination definitely decreased the risk. It's just my clinical impression. If a patient has no symptoms, are medications still beneficial? The question is whether we offer medications to patients who have no symptoms, and the answer is generally no, because it's not going to make them feel better, and there's no demonstrable effect on survival. Um, for the exception of that rule are patients who exercise frequently and will often offer a low-dose beta blocker to those patients to um, offer some level of protection at higher level of exercise. How can exercise test results inform treatment decisions? The question comes up about exercise testing in patients who have uh, HCM. And the answer is that we do uh, exercise testing on everyone, and it's extremely helpful. Um, first of all, um, it tells us how far a patient can actually walk on the treadmill and how long. And this gives us a very good estimation of how impaired they are and how um, symptomatic they are or disabled that they are from their condition. Sometimes uh, patients decrease what they do on a daily basis, and when we ask them if they have symptoms, they say no, and the answer is because they're not doing anything. Um, other patients say that they have, um, they're very limited, and to our surprise, they can walk for 10 minutes on the treadmill, or even longer. So it gives an objective measurement to how uh, impaired a person is. Second of all, it's vital for us to differentiate whether a patient has obstruction or not because there are all sorts of excellent treatments for obstruction um, and symptoms, while our treatments for non-obstructive HCM are very limited at this time. So we do everything that we can to try to provoke uh, latent obstruction, and exercise is among the best ways to do that. There are two tricks to provoking uh, latent obstruction that are very useful uh, with an exercise echo. And the first is to acquire the gradient standing, because doing that often will reveal gradients that might not be obvious when the patient lies down. And second, and this one is an important trick, is that HCM patients um, often complain of feeling particularly impaired after eating. And this is because um, the blood goes to the bowel to absorb food. And when it does, it leaves the heart relatively empty of blood. When the heart is empty of blood, this increases 
the overlap between the mitral valve and the septum, which increases the amount of obstruction. So eating is a strong provocation of symptoms in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and we've reported um, how the postprandial or after eating exercise test can expose latent gradients in patients who otherwise would be diagnosed as non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And this is very important because there are patients who've come to us who've been complete mysteries uh, in their diagnosis and in their workup because everyone has called them non-obstructive HCM, but it's not until they eat and walk on the treadmill that we can see how obstructed they are. We call this a, a standing post-exercise postprandial stress test, or an SPEP. And another way of thinking about this is that HCM patients do very well unless they're called upon to stand up or eat. What is the New York Heart Association classification of symptoms? Uh, this ranges from one to four. And it dates from the early ages of uh, cardiology when um, cardiologists were trying to quantify how symptomatic people were. New York Heart Association 1 is not limited. New York Heart Association 2 is um, patients who are limited um, with marked exertion. New York Heart Association Class 3 uh, are patients who are limited with uh, milder exertion. And New York Heart Association Class 4 people who are symptomatic at rest or with trivial amounts of exertion. So what that translates to in New York City is that if you can't walk up the subway steps, we call you a New York Heart Association Class 3. If you can walk up the New York Heart Association, uh, if you can walk up the New York City subway steps, um, but you um, have trouble on bad days, or if you have trouble um, climbing a steep hill, or if you have trouble after, only after eating, uh, we would call you a New York Heart Association Class 2.